So now we have a process for representing negative numbers. And we're going to put that back into the original idea for this whole unit, which was to create an arithmetic and logic unit. We have a machine that can add and subtract negative and positive numbers. And we're going to put around that extra logic to allow us to do things like increment and decrement. We're going to allow us to do things like logic functions and or not. We're going to choose between one of these answers. And we're going to provide flags that will give us information about these answers. OK, so this is the whole process. First, we're going to uh, build an adder. <laughs> this is, again, our whole process. We're going to start with an adder. This is a single bit slice for this adder. And we're going to want to be able to do one of two things with this adder. We're going to want to be able to add a number to a positive number. We're going to want to be able to add a number to a negative number. We're also going to want to be able to add 0 to a positive or a negative number. Why would we want to do that? Well, if we add 0 to a positive number, that just gives us the number back again. But if we add 0 to a negative number, that allows us to take a value and make it negative. So we can make b plus or minus, which allows us to actually convert a positive number into a negative number through this arithmetic and logic unit. So this is going to be the first chunk of our ALU, which is going to allow us to add and subtract and also take the negative value. We have two control lines. One is going to tell us whether we're adding or subtracting. And we built this add or subtractor. And that gives us the ability to flip the bits and add one to make b negative. And we also have one bit here that's going to allow us to choose A as either A, the input to the ALU, or the value 0, which allows us to make A plus or minus B and 0 plus or minus B, which lets us negate a value. That'll be useful. We also want to have some logic functionality. Now, this is very straightforward, because all we have to do is put a bunch of logic functionality down and then use a big multiplexer to select which of the logic functions we want for each bit. So we're going to have A and B, we're going to have A or B, we're going to have A exclusive or B, and we're going to have not B. Not B equivalent to and similar to uh, negative B, which we were going to build from the arithmetic side. So this is the arithmetic side. This is the logic side. We're going to put those two together into a single machine that's going to allow us to choose one of those eight functions. And then we're going to think about how we can identify information uh, that is the output of these things in flags. Uh, we'll do the flags first, apparently. Uh, the flags are going to identify important information about the result that we're going to prepare through this arithmetic and logic unit. There are a whole bunch of standard flags that you can look up. But in general, the four sort of fundamental flags that we're going to want to look at is n for negative, to say if the result is negative. This is going to be useful for comparing two numbers together. right? A comparison operation is just subtracting and checking the sign. If it's negative, then one was less than the other. We're going to want a zero flag to say, did this comparison, subtraction, whatever, result in a value of zero, which is equivalent to, are these two numbers the same? Because in a lot of cases, we're going to want to detect whether these two numbers are the same or different. And that's going to just be a big um, nor of the final output. Are all the values zero? If they all are zero, if any of these numbers is a one, then this is a one. That makes a zero. If all of these are 0, this makes a 0, flip the bits, and it's a 1. And so the Z flag is just a big nor for the whole thing. Then we have our overflow flag, which we already talked about, which is going to compare the carry in and the carry out of the topmost bit to tell us whether the result fits in the two's complement representation. And we're going to also want to have the carry out if we're doing unsigned uh, addition and subtraction. So those are the four flags, negative, 0, overflow, and carry. And we call overflow V uh, because calling it O would be really confusing because O looks like zero and there's zeros everywhere. So we're going to call the overflow V. That's just a traditional standard thing we do. This is an example of an ALU design. There are lots of other ALU designs out there, but the principle is the same. You're going to design the logic for um, the mathematics that you want to be able to do. And then you're going to have a big multiplexer at the end to choose which of those answers you're going to provide as an output. So in a lot of ways, it's similar to the uh, register design that we did, where we provide these options and then use a multiplexer to choose one that we're going to make use of. So now this looks complicated, but we have all of the logic that we need to make this happen. So we have two inputs, A and B. They are presented to all of the logic. We present A and B to 
all of the logic and all of the mathematics. And then we choose with multiplexers which of these two we want to have. So S0 and S1 are used as control logic for the logic side and for the arithmetic side. And then S2 is used to choose whether we're using the logic side or the arithmetic side. Then if you look at these three, S2, S1, S0, based on those numbers, you can see what function this arithmetic logic unit is actually accomplishing, whether it's doing AND or exclusive or not, add, pass through, just pass the value of B by itself, subtract or negative B.